My name is David Obadi, and I'm Product Marketing Director at GE Digital, specializing in industrial applications that are transforming automotive manufacturing. I'm delighted to be your host today and excited about our agenda and two guest speakers. Joining me today, we've got Dennis Higgins, former automotive operations executive with over 36 years of experience with 17 different positions at Ford Motor Company. His roles have included general manufacturing manager, director of new model programs, director of business transformation for Europe. Dennis will share his perspective and highlight what your organization needs to do to embrace this changing industry and how to leverage industrial applications to remain competitive. Also joining us, we've got Paul Wang, Senior Staff Program Manager with GE, who's going to share how one of our customers, Cherry Jaguar Land Rover, is leveraging new technology along with our manufacturing execution systems to transform the factory floor. As you know, there's an unprecedented level of disruption in the automotive industry. And at the same time, a level of excitement comparable or even more um, more exceeding than what we saw 10 years ago when mobile phones, pagers, computing, and the touch interface all converged to create our modern smartphone. Do you remember 10 years ago, Apple launched the iPhone 3GS? Nokia was number one in the world in mobile phone sales with over a third of the market. Nokia, Samsung, and LG together had about 70% of the market, and BlackBerry sold 40% more phones than Apple, and Apple had uh, a whopping 2% market share. Perhaps one big difference between today's auto market and smartphones is the category growth that analysts are projecting. Look at what we see today. Um, we're looking at automotive sales. If you look at passenger and light commercial vehicle sales, they declined slightly in 2018 for the first time since 2009. And many analysts are projecting more declines ahead. Now let's explore a few trends shaping the market. On top of most lists in automotive trends is electrification. Electric vehicles promise a smaller environmental footprint, even with our current mix of fossil fuels and renewable power generation sites, electrics are the emission equivalent of a vehicle getting over 70 miles to the gallon. With this to continue to improve as solar comes online and other renewables come online. Electric vehicles deliver instant torque, low center of gravity, a lively driving experience. But one of the lesser discussed aspects of electrification is the impact that this may have on business models. Electrics are much simpler and much more reliable the drivetrain has 85% fewer parts. There's no transmission, no excessive heat from combustion, no exhaust system, and electric, guitars or electric uh, cars are slowed by regenerative braking instead of friction. They don't need oil changes, spark plugs, etc. It's great for the consumer, but today's auto manufacturers, and especially dealers, make a high proportion of their profits on after-sales service and parts. Now, if electrics don't require all this, how will automakers replace the lost profit? And if vehicles don't wear as much, will consumers feel compelled to replace them as often? What would this mean for new car sales? This brings up our next trend. I trust most of, most all of you are in your offices and it's likely that for each one of us here on the call, there's a sad automobile waiting idle in some parking lot waiting for us to return. On average, our automobiles are only used 8% of the time. It's usually inefficient, and autonomous promises to change this. Imagine if your car could drive back home by itself and pick up your children, take them to their after-school activities. Maybe in a world like this, your family could get by in a single vehicle instead of two. Imagine if we went from 8% utilization to 12%, how many fewer vehicles we would need to produce. Of course, I'm sure we'd find new ways to use the additional benefits that we get through autonomous. Uh, there'd be more trips than we have today. But autonomous is also poised to intersect with our next trend that could have a big impact on the industry. That's right, ride sharing. Ride sharing combined with autonomous could mean that instead of your auto sitting idle in the lot, it could be earning money for you as it's chauffeuring others to and from their errands. In this world of the future, the robo cab, as it's often called, 
might have a dramatic impact on both personal mobility by making it much easier to get around and pressure on the number of cars produced and manufactured because it helps drive up utilization for, for vehicles overall. The market believes it's inevitable. Look at Uber, a company that doesn't make or own any cars, which is valued highly than nearly any other automaker in existence today. Only Toyota is valued significantly higher than Uber. And it's not just the long term that's under pressure. Automakers know that if they don't innovate now, they won't survive. And the investment needs to come from current operations. They're cutting costs drastically. We've seen 38,000 job cuts announced by the OEMs in the past six months. How are automakers preparing for the future? Well, there's three things. One, a ruthless focus on efficiency and cost reduction, not just for the short term, but for the long term also to prepare for a world where the category could enter a period of hyper competition and unit sales decline. Number two, flexibility in manufacturing. Quick changeovers and the ability to run multiple variants and even models on fewer and fewer production lines. This helps automakers consolidate plants for efficiency or maximize variants to appeal to a wider range of consumers and grow market share in a declining market. And number three, of course, quality. In addition to the short-term financial cost of poor quality, customer equity and brand equity perceptions are particularly important as consumers decide who to trust in a new world of electric and autonomous transportation, a new world where their lives are literally at risk. Brands with weak equity risk being among the first to be disrupted. Let's hear a perspective from Nick Gill and Cap Gemini, an important member of our partner ecosystem. My name's Nick Gill and I'm the head of Cap Gemini automotive practice globally. I've been working in the automotive industry most of my life and I've been over 20 years at Capgemini. So, so why is digital transformation important for the industry? I, I think it starts from the consumer experience. Clearly that's got to be critical, but it comes back very quickly into manufacturing. If you think about the, the, the vehicle of the future, whether that's an autonomous, an electric, a connected, or whatever type of vehicle, it's going to be more and more personalized. Uh, the, uh, each consumer is going to want a particular experience or each fleet manager is going to want a particular type of vehicle. And so the manufacturing processes have to be very flexible to manage this, this digital transformation. It's going to be critical to implement in our, in our plants going forward. Uh, a lot of manufacturing companies have proofs of concept where they've invested and often had good results but they've not taken that proof of concept through to a full deployment and execution. And there's lots of reasons for it but I suppose fundamentally because each plant is different, even the processes in the plants can be different uh, and, and there is the human side as well. Uh, you know, my plan is actually working well. I've, I've, got, I've got some very tough deadlines. I really don't want to disrupt operations today by, by implementing this thing that might have worked in somebody else's plan. Somehow we have to turn the proofs of concept into more deployments so that you really do get the return on investment. Otherwise, uh, we're wasting our time. Now let's bring on Dennis Higgins to highlight how you can prepare for change and embrace digital transformation. Dennis? Yeah, thank you, David. Um, it's a real pleasure for me to be able to give you in today's webinar. Okay, so firstly, what I'd like to uh, take a look at is just a recap really on the major industry trends that are causing the historical levels of disruption in the industry. David touched upon quite a few of those, but uh, I'll give you a bit of a bit of a spin as to what we really need to manufacturing operations in the supply chain. We're starting with electric vehicles. The switch from traditional internal combustion engines to battery electric is driving significant changes in vehicle architecture, reducing the number of components as David mentioned and will be forcing automakers to close engine plants. Today we have many, many diesel and gas engine plants uh, serving our vehicle plants. Are they all needed in the future? 
Regarding autonomous and connected vehicles, this is driving more new complex technology in the vehicles, which from a manufacturing perspective requires more advanced processing and testing capabilities in the plants. With respect to ride sharing, fast becoming more popularly acceptable, clearly there will be people who decide not to own or rent a vehicle, which typically is not utilised most of the time, as David mentioned. This trend will result in potentially fewer vehicle sales in the mid to longer term, as ride sharing and the use of Uber and cabbage sites become more common. Regarding diesel decline, you know, we're, we're, all, we're all aware of the diesel decline in issues that's uh, taken place in the last couple of years. That's really driving the imbalance in, in the auto industry in terms of demand between gas and diesel. Underutilizing diesel engine plants, you know, running from three shift to two shift to one shift operation, whilst at the same time stretching gas engine plants to bursting capacity. For the short term issue, that's very disruptive to, to the automakers. And finally, there's too much capacity. There's too much capacity today, and going forward looking into the future, there will be far too much capacity. Too many underutilised plants likely to close, with the remaining plants that do stay open being subject to significant cap uh, capacity utilisation pressures. So, just to put it into perspective, $300 billion is what the global automakers are planning to spend in the next coming years on the electric vehicles alone. A staggering. But remember, this is in parallel to funding their current business of gas and diesel vehicles. So they need to find this, this new money, this cash, to fund for the future, to fund the technologies that the customers demand. The key point here is how are they going to do that? Where are they going to find the money? These levels of investment. This is only for electric vehicles, not to mention autonomous and connected. Well, obviously, the major change for that is going to come from reducing costs throughout the entire value chain. So, let's take a deeper look at uh, what that means to automotive manufacturing, and of course, not only the OEM plants, but also its part suppliers, you know, tier one to tier two, it's the complete value chain. So these are really the, the key challenges for manufacturing and the impact. So starting with reducing cost, you know, that, that's clearly an enabler for the future. Um, in the manufacturing world, we've always been used to cost reduction. This is it's, it's a given every year, 2%, 3%. But now, because of these the trends, the mega trends, we're facing enormous pressures to make step change in cost. So from a manufacturing perspective, this basically means increasing capacity utilisation, as mentioned previously. You know, plants are going to close and the existing remaining plants that stay open will be subject to more volume, more complex product. So capacity utilisation is key. Along with that, increasing productivity and of course reducing all forms of waste, wherever it is. The second item here is really around complexity of vehicles from being connected vehicles, autonomous vehicles, etc., are becoming more and more complex compared to today's type of vehicle, and more personalised. The impact of manufacturing is you need to understand how to manage complexity better, all right, and increase the flexibility of our system, not to make one model or two models in a plant. We need to find ways of making five models, six models, seven models, at a high volume. That's not easy. Number three here, short development cycles. Traditionally, a new model, complete new vehicle, is every six, seven, eight years, depending on the manufacturer. Now, the customer's not going to wait that long for a new vehicle. So, development cycles are reducing. They're getting quicker, right? Every four years, five years, we're expecting a brand new vehicle and, and upgrades in between. So, what does that mean for the manufacturing plants and the suppliers? Of course, they need to reduce the development and launch costs. Instead of a major launch every seven years, they're facing launches some plants every year. They're multi-model plants, so they've got to reduce costs, some sustainable. Reduce capital expenditure. So this is the expenditure you spend on tooling, equipment, facilities in the plants or in the supply base to prepare for a new model. So if that new model comes every three, four years, instead of every seven or eight years, 
but you've got to reduce the cost. Faster changeovers and ramp up, of course. This is all waste. As you have a volume ramp up, there's a certain amount of vehicles you do not produce because of the learning curve effect. You're going to find ways of reducing that, eliminating that waste. And finally, customer satisfaction. The customer is demanding more and more and more, and quite rightly. So from a manufacturing perspective, reducing manufacturing defects, reaching the customer, and a faster order delivery so the customer, when they place the order, they get the vehicle sooner, and just as important, they get it on the promise date they were given when they made the order, is absolutely imperative. I can hear you as manufacturing leaders, you'd be saying, well, what's new? These are the things I've been working on to improve for years and years. Well, the difference now is that the automakers must accelerate the progress of improvement. There is no option. It's improve or die, simple as that. So, again, as manufacturing leaders, you need to take a, cl a close, hard look your manufacturing strategy. You need to question it. How does it address the challenges? Now, how? How specific is it? Not just setting targets. You know, we've been setting targets in a manufacturing strategy for years. You know, two percent improvement in this, four percent improvement there. We need to know how is it going to be achieved. You know, what are the numbers? Is it aggressive or stretching up? Is it set up to become a leader amongst the competitors, or is it set up just to be competitive? It needs to be setting up to become a leader. And thirdly, does it include a digital transformation? Digital transformation is a key amount of the cheap superior operational performance that's required going forward. No question. So, now I'm sure you've all heard of the term smart factory, or factory of the future, it's sometimes called. Basically, it's all about leveraging digital technologies in many different forms and applications to deliver superior operational in productivity, in efficiency, in quality, in flexibility, speed, agility, and of course, significantly reducing cost so the automakers can fund the future. Let's just take a look at some typical digital applications that I've seen in automotive operations. Starting with relatively simple examples for assembly operations, quality and logistics applications. Smart watches for receiving alerts and instructions. Assembly line operators to pick the right parts. Doesn't need to think He's got the message on his wrist. Inspectors for the list of quality checks to be performed at a quality station on the assembly line. Maintenance personnel and material handling personnel receiving alerts when a machine has stopped working. The maintenance person receives a real time alert and goes to the machine. Or if a part needs to be rubbish, if a part is running low and stock line side, an automatic alert via the smartwatch. Voice recognition for quality inspectors to dictate record results of their checks rather than typing into a PC or writing on a clipboard. This is an efficiency. Radio frequency ID tags, RFID tags, the tracking of vehicles, components, delivery trucks, enables real-time traceability. And finally, autonomous guided vehicles, big labor saving, clean, energy efficient and reprogrammable. All of these relatively simple applications are available today. These are not new, okay, but they all deliver cost reduction, productivity, waste reduction, complexity, flexibility, and basically help the operations. Moving on to automation, specifically robot technology and applications in production environments. We all know robots are not new in the automotive industry. They've been around for a while. However, because of that, they are more affordable today and, of course, can be applied to many different processes. Indeed, the leading automakers who are really embracing digital are not stopping here. Through advanced software, data and analytics, 
they are able to connect all of this together, which enables real-time plant performance monitoring and continuous improvement. Likewise, with automation for inspection applications, robots combined with cameras and or lasers are capable of performing many different quality inspection tasks, as good as or even better than humans. Examples include stamping panel geometry, body white assembly geometry, body white world quality, paint shop sealer, dirt in paint, and even in the vehicle assembly plant, measuring the gap in the flush of the closure assembly, speaking to the vehicles or scratches and dents on the, on the final finished vehicle prior to shipping to the customer. Many different applications for inspection requirements today available, naturally in use. Machinery. We all know that to improve productivity and asset utilisation also requires less machine downtime. Leading automakers are implementing predictive maintenance technology, or sometimes called condition-based monitoring, on their production critical machinery. Basically using sensors and advanced software to monitor heat, noise and vibration, enabling early detection of potential breakdowns. This allows the maintenance personnel and intervention to check or adjust the machine to avoid the breakdown avoiding costly breakdowns. I mean, I've experienced um, press lines that run 19 and 20 day per week shifts that have been broken down and down for two or three days to the see these breakdowns. I cannot afford to have that level of breakdown on production critical machines. So predictive maintenance is absolutely key to deliver a greater uptime. But the real winners are those that are able to connect all of this together through advanced software and the internet of things. Imagine smart connected factories where the plant manager can see exactly what's going on anywhere, anytime throughout the factory. Going further to achieve a connected ecosystem where, for example, plants get a real-time early warning of a supply issue at a tier two supplier, enabling an early decision to be made to protect production schedule. Or even the plant receiving real-time quality feedback directly to the point of fit of the part or the operation on the assembly line from customers, dealers or after sales. This is all possible. This is all the, the, the vision of the, of the factory of the future, which is the factory of today. There are factories that are running in this state today. Hello, good morning, good afternoon, everyone. This is Paul Wang. Uh, I work for GE Digital. I'm based in Shanghai, China. I'm responsible for the automotive project delivery. Okay, that works through the CGR Cherry Jaguar Land Rover. CGR is the first uh, joint venture between uh, China and the UK. It's the mother company is Cherry. Automotive and the Jaguar Land Rover. G Digital has been supporting use uh, uh, CGR to increase production by our brilliant manufacturing system since 2015. The AJ200 engine plant uh, is the first uh, engine plant uh, besides UK Wolfhampton and engine plant. This plant 
adopt some of the world's most advanced system and uh, automobile manufacturing technologies. Each process demands a high automation rate and a short process time. In early 2017, the factory produced uh, 130k engines per year. In the last year, their engine production was ramped up from 130k to 240k. CGR is aiming to build a transparent factory with the world's leading automatic production line of engine to achieve lean production and better support the local vehicle plant and even the global needs from GRR. This plant uh, produces five car models, Range Rover, Evoque, Land Rover Discovery Sport, as well as Jaguar XFL, XER, and uh, E-Pace. This plant is highly flexible production lines. It has machining departments, have three production lines, crankshaft, block, and, uh, and uh, assembly production lines. The assembly pro uh, department have 17 production rooms and also have online and offline inspection rooms. At the early stage stage of this this engine plant, they have faced uh, several major challenges. The first one was the difficult of data acquisition and the system integration, since they had various automation equipment from different uh, vendors all over the world, and that use different uh, interface standards. Secondly. How to ensure the high stability, stable stability and the time efficiency when the data interaction worked on high friction, which was in less than 200 milliseconds between MES and the control system. The third one was how to build up a transparent factory and improve the production performance through multi-dimensions analysis. The last but not least, they had various repair scenarios and a complex business process, process in our in their engine plant. One of the greatest challenges was how to support the diversify the business need and simplify the operation process. From 2015 to till now, we have rolled out several brilliant manufacturing solutions based on our MES G. Prophecy and predict MS platform. To achieve the system integration, we design a function model to standard, standardize the communication protocol between MS and the control system among equipment from different vendors. As a result, automatic data collection has covered all of the operations. There are about uh, 350 operations and uh, more than 500 um, automotive, automotive, automotive equipment. Our SCADA system simplicity and the uh, historian provider IGE enables MES handles up to 100,000 real time tasks from the more than 500 uh, equipment. The stability of data acquisition of our engine plant has been improved greatly. And also the our project team has collected huge chunks of data and it delivers more than fifty business intelligence analysis reports which provide the, to the CGR management and the operators with multi perspectives for advanced analysis. On the issue of the product repair, the delivery the visual non-conformance management solution to integrate the process and the products by operating the 3D model on the touch screens. The visual monitor modules has covered 100 production process. 
Here I would also like to share the latest, the latest success case of mixed reality in the vehicle assembly plant. In the past, in CGR and GR, the new car models usually need uh, at least nine months to achieve mass production. Much of this time is dedicated to soft issues, soft issues such as people training. Engineers need to learn how to assemble the new components correctly and effectively with the help of our their UK engineering team. To reduce time to market, CGR need to find a way to reduce the cost of technical support and the training where bringing theory in practice in a safe and uh, engaging man manner. The answer is mi mixed reality. We deliver the Holland's mixed reality solution only in four months for the pilot project based on our Predix MES software. Helping engineers to train, troubleshoot, and resolve technical issues in a real world environment. Mixed reality technology train like training let their trainees see the virtual three dimensions assets of different vehicles in different situations. For the training, they get the benefit of being able to <clears throat> directly call in help from experts wherever they are in their factory or overseas. The expert is able to see from the perspective of the training and can simulate simultaneously manipulate the virtual three dimensions imagined as part of the Holland augmented augmented reality functions. We also provide the with non-conformance, with non-conformance, also based on the uh, 3D models. And the 3D models can come from the PDM system, such as Team Center and the DASO system. Because the perform the uh, very strong performance of uh, SCADA software, the response time of all machining assembly operations is less than 200 milliseconds. This collection covers 100 production environment with more than 100,000 real time points. And the production volume from the beginning of the plant in 2013 is about 30, 130k per year. And in the last year, with the MES solutions help, it's ramped up to 240k per year. Looking into the future, with the development and application of new technologies, such as 5G, Five generation wireless system. Uh, we will continue to partner with our clients, CGR, to accelerate their digital transformation journey in the industry Internet of Things. We will deploy the energy management system, pilot system based on the 5G network in CGR. And also we will roll out our mixed reality solution to other assembly plant and the uh, engine plant. And also we will operate on the APM solution to their very high value equipment. Also for the Predix private cloud, it will be the LT platform for their CGR manufacturing and the supply chain system. All of the applications in the future will deploy on the PPC platform. Okay, thank you. Hi, Dennis, it's your turn. Thank you, Paul. Okay, let's talk about uh, getting started. So, as manufacturing leaders, you are probably thinking right now, well, how do I understand my current state of digital integration in my plants? 
And what are the digital opportunities for me that would deliver the highest value creation? Well, to help answer these key questions, it's imperative to work with the right digital partner. Generally, automakers today do not have all the required level of knowledge and experience of digital and software technologies to go along. You need to work with the right digital partner who can help you with all of this. For instance, to understand your current state, to work with you to review your plant or plants or, or operation, to understand what you've got and what you need to go forward on your journey towards a smart factory or an ecosystem. To help you with understanding what products are out there, including the timing, how long it takes to implement, cost, benefit, return on investment. Connected smart factories and ecosystems, what does it mean? What does it take to get there? Reliability, risk, cyber security. A digital partner can help you with all of your queries. And finally, creating a digital transformation roadmap. You can't do it alone. So in creating a digital transformation plan, whether you are an OEM or a supplier, there are some key considerations to remember. Starting with goals. Focus on mid and long term. It's not a sprint, it's a marathon. Lean manufacturing was not implemented overnight, nor will smart factories be. Funding. The investment required could be linked to the renewal or upgrade cycle of existing assets and also potentially product programs that require different processes or testing equipment. Actions clearly need to be prioritised based on the biggest impact to operational performance and the bottom line of course. And implementation. Put together a plan that is systematic, that will launch and later roll out in other areas or other plants, rather than ad hoc. And again, to reinforce the point, working with an experienced digital partner would ensure all of these are considered and you build the right plan. So just to summarise, disruptive industry trends are forcing automakers to improve capacity utilisation, productivity, efficiency, flexibility, quality and speed whilst at the same time significantly reducing cost. The leading automakers are investing in digital transformation as the key enabler to achieve smart factories and connected ecosystems. So ensure you don't get left behind and ensure you choose the right digital partner. Thank you. Thanks, Paul. Thanks, Dennis. And thanks, Paul. Um, I appreciate your your insights and perspective. Uh, some really great examples there, Paul, uh, with what we're doing at Cherry Jank, Jaguar Land Rover. And Dennis, thanks for your perspective and, and insights on how to think about digital transformation. Uh, I hope everyone enjoyed the session. Thanks for joining our webcast. And if you'd like to learn more, please visit us at ge.com slash digital slash customers slash automotive. Thanks, everybody. Enjoy the rest of your day.